In this video, I'm going to be going through high yield headaches. This is brought to you by Dirty Medicine. Are you wondering how you can support Dirty Medicine and support my mission to provide free quality medical education to medical students around the world? If so, the way to support my channel is to sign up to become a Dirty Medicine member. By going to my channel and clicking the join button, or by clicking the link which you can find in any video, you can sign up for some really awesome perks in addition to providing secure financial support of my channel. For just $4.99 a month, which is paid through Google, so it's obviously very secure, you get some awesome perks as a Dirty Medicine member. First, on my channel, on the community tab, you get access to members only polls where you will help decide the topic of my next video. You can also comment on those polls and just type in whatever specific topic you want to see next. And I will preferentially choose topics to make that my members are requesting. The second cool perk is that whenever you comment anywhere on my channel, you'll get the really cool Dirty Medicine logo next to your username. So everybody who sees your comment will know that you're a Dirty Medicine member, that you support the channel financially, and that you believe in free quality medical education. So again, if you're looking for a way to support my channel, support my mission, please consider clicking that join button and signing up to become a Dirty Medicine member. Now let's get into today's video. We're going to be talking about high yield headaches. The three high yield headaches include tension headaches, migraine headaches, and cluster headaches. And this will be a pretty quick video. There's not a whole lot that you need to know about headaches, but even though it's a small, relatively speaking, small section of neurology, it's very, very high yield because clinically, this shows up all the time. Patients complain about headaches almost as much as they complain about anything else. So this is a top complaint, and because of that, USMLE and Comlex has identified it as a public health concern in the sense that physicians need to be trained in the differences between these headaches. So let's go through them one at a time, starting with tension headaches. And the format for how I'll do this is on each slide, we'll talk about the high yield findings, including the location, the actual clinical findings, and the treatment. So let's begin with tension headaches. Tension headaches are bilateral, and they tend to be constant, dull, band-like pain, which stretches across the bilateral forehead. Tension headaches will last a few hours on average. Depending on which primary literature source you read, you tend to see figures like three to six hours, but the key is that it's at least 30 minutes because that timeline of at least 30 minutes is one of the ways that you can help differentiate it versus another type of headache in your differential diagnosis. As far as treatment goes, acutely, NSAIDs and acetaminophen are the treatment, but if these are chronic tension headaches, you can put patients on amitriptyline, which is a, a TCA. Okay, so those are tension headaches. And when it comes to USMLE and Comlex, really the key for tension headaches is knowing its location because it's the only bilateral headache. And because of that, you want to think of a tension band across the forehead. So if you imagine somebody wearing a tension band that's going across their forehead, the area of their head that that tension band is spanning helps you remember that this is a bilateral headache that runs across the forehead. And because tension headaches are sort of your general everyday headaches that your, your lay person will be complaining of when they say something like, I have such a headache today, this is what we're talking about. Just good old tension headaches, that dull, constant band-like pain across the forehead. So not too much nitty gritty to know with the tension headache. Again, this is your general headache. Just remember a tension band across the forehead to remember that this is bilateral. Now, tension headaches are the only bilateral headache, so that's really the main, main feature to know. Let's switch gears and talk about our first unilateral headache. So we're talking now about migraines. Migraines are unilateral. And the unique thing about migraines is that it is unilateral pulsating pain that's often due to the release of vasoactive substances which irritate cranial nerve 5. So a lot of high yields here. Remember that it's unilateral, that the pain in a migraine is due to the irritation of cranial nerve 5, cranial nerve 5, due to the release of vasoactive substances. Now, the clinical symptoms that you'll see will be photophobia, which means not wanting to look at light because light will be painful or irritating. Phonophobia, which is not wanting to hear loud noises because loud noises will be irritating or painful. Nausea, vomiting, 
and an aura. So these patients know that the migraine is coming. They can sort of sense it ahead of time. This may also be caused by, con by consuming foods that contain either tyramine or nitrate. And that's very, very high yield because in USMLE or Comlex, in the question, they could give you, you know, somebody's eating all of these foods. Suddenly they have pain on one side of their head. Um, what is the, what does this do to, and the answer might be like vasoactive irritation of cranial nerve five or, you know, however they want to phrase it, but they're going after you knowing that little tidbit of information that this can be caused due to specific foods. Now, oral contraceptives can also cause migraines. So I'm pointing out a lot of high yields here. And as you can see, a test writer might be able to expand the way that they could ask you about migraines using a third order question, which again requires your knowledge of all of these high yields. So migraines, unilateral pulsating, it's due to vasoactive irritation of cranial nerve five, features photo and phonophobia, nausea, vomiting, and aura might be due to either certain foods with tyramine or nitrate or oral contraceptives. The treatment for migraines, it depends if the migraine is acute or if you're prophylaxing the patient. So acutely, the answer would be NSAIDs, or triptans or dihydroergotamine. But if you're putting somebody on prophylaxis, the answer would be beta blockers. That's usually the answer, but subsequently you could use topiramate or valproate. But for test purposes, acutely think NSAIDs, prophylaxis, think beta blockers. Now for migraines, the way that I always remember this is instead of saying migraine, I always said eye grain, which reminded me of the photo and subsequently by association, Phonophobia. Usually, but not always, a test writer will give you photophobia. So they might either say the word directly or they'll say, you know, patient prefers to stay in a dark room in bed. And what they're telling you is they don't want to look at light, which tells you they have a migraine. So if they give you that symptom, it's migraine. And because of that, I just remember eyegrain. So I remember photophobia. Because again, photophobia is the key symptom for getting this right. Now let's differentiate migraine from the next unilateral headache which is cluster headaches. So cluster headaches are also unilateral. And interestingly, cluster headaches are the one headache that disproportionately affects males. So both tension and migraine affect females more than males, but cluster is the one that affects males most often. Cluster headaches are sharp stabbing pain, which is said to be periorbital, so around the eye. And because it's periorbital, you see other symptoms involving the eye. So you're going to see things like lacrimation. You'll see rhinorrhea. And in some cases, you can see two of the, the symptoms of Horner's syndrome. So you'll see ptosis and meiosis. You're not going to see the anhydrosis, but you'll see the ptosis and meiosis. So if you see any combination of some Horner's syndrome symptoms, lacrimation or rhinorrhea, they're going after cluster headache. Now, interestingly, apparently, and I've never had these, but apparently cluster headaches, the pain is supposed to be like unbearable. And because of that, it has earned the nickname, um, the suicide headache. And that's because a lot of patients experience such unremitting pain that they can actually develop suicidal ideation. So cluster headaches are very serious and need to be treated. So how do you treat them? Well, acutely, you use 100% oxygen, right? That's, that's the answer. And sometimes that catches medical students off guard because you're thinking about all, you know, you get a question about a headache, your brain starts moving, you're thinking like, you know, maybe it's NSAIDs, maybe it's a TCA, maybe it's a beta blocker, blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden, a triptan, and then all of a sudden you see oxygen as an answer and you're, you're a little thrown off guard. But that's the answer for cluster headaches. Acutely, you give them the oxygen. And for prophylaxis, you give them verapamil, okay? So verapamil prophylaxis for clusters and beta blocker prophylaxis for migraines. Be able to differentiate those two. Now that's really it for the lecture and, and just for your studying pleasure, I wanna fill this chart out for you so that if you're in a pinch, you can come back to this video and fast forward to the end and just look at this chart. So again, you wanna differentiate the headache type with location, clinical findings, and treatment. So you see that here. Remember that your tension headaches are really your, you know, the general run-of-the-mill headache. It's the only one that's bilateral. It's band-like. You treat it with NSAIDs acutely. For migraines and cluster, both of them are unilateral, but the clinical findings are a little bit different. Migraines have the aura, the photo and phonophobia associated with nausea and vomiting, whereas the cluster is the lacrimation, rhinorrhea, ptosis, and meiosis. Migraines are treated acutely with NSAIDs, clusters are treated acutely with oxygen. Migraines are prophylaxed with beta blockers, and clusters are prophylaxed with verapamil. 
Remember that cluster affects males, all of the other ones affect females. And remember that migraines can be caused by either tyramine or nitrate containing foods or oral contraceptives. And I'm just gonna stick this factoid in because I didn't put it on the slide, but cluster headaches can be caused by the consumption of alcohol, okay? So if you see alcohol, think cluster, you see oral contraceptives or certain types of foods, think migraines, and then tension is just, you know, someone's stressed out, they have a general headache, nothing you can do. So that's it for headaches. I flew through it. Even though there's only a little bit of information, don't underestimate this topic. It's pretty high yield. I uh, hope this was helpful for you guys. And remember, consider signing up to be a Dirty Medicine member.